Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we are here to talk about our 40th anniversary season at the Oregon Mozart Players. And uh, with me, of course, today is artistic director Kelly Quo. I'm Darren Fuster, the executive director, and I'm going to turn it over to Kelly to give us some information about what we're going to be hearing this season. Thank you, Darren. I'm super excited that we have not only a brand new season, the 40th anniversary season to pay homage to all the great things Oregon Mozart Players has done in the past, but we also get to do so hopefully with a live audience and super excited to be able to perform for you in person again. We have five wonderful concerts for you in subscription for our 40th anniversary season, starting with our November program, which I called Old School. It's really an homage to previous times. So all of the compositions have some relationship to the past. We open with a symphony in C major by Mariana Martinez. You may not know by name, but you certainly know that her harpsichord teacher, Haydn, and her piano forehand partner, Mozart. So it's wonderful to open uh, the program with a nearly forgotten composer. Following that, we will have Nokotula Ingwenyama, a superstar violist making her OMP debut, playing not one, but two pieces on our program, starting with a piece by Dobrika Tabakova. She has written a suite in old style, which is um, a modern portrayal of 18th century aristocratic household in the style of Rameau. Wonderful piece that involves harpsichord, a little bit of percussion, as well as our entire string section. Later on to end the program, uh, Tula will be playing Schubert's Arpeggione Sonata in arrangement for string orchestra that Tabakova has done. And besides that, we actually have a very exciting world premiere by composer Stella Sung that will be basically portraying a communication between the ancients and today, the ancients being represented by whales. So Kohola, the name of the piece is humpback whale in Hawaiian. And unifying all that together, we'll, we'll be able to actually use video and uh, some video and photography by Northwest Pacific Northwest photographer and diver Annie Crawley. So you'll get not only the world premiere, but you also get the visual aspect that portrays a really important message of, of peace. And I can't wait for you to be able to hear that. Following this program, we have our annual candlelight concert, which I've entitled Bach Home for the Holidays because Papa Bach sits at the head of the table. And we get two of his very, very famous pieces. One is a double violin concerto, and the other is the flute centered orchestral suite number two. Playing the Bach double will be two of Oregon Mozart players' fantastic violinists. We have Jennifer Estrin and Julia Franz making their own piece solo debuts. Uh, on this particular piece. Around that, we will also have some other famous Bach melodies that will be very, very familiar to you. The air on the G string, as well as uh, sheep may safely graze. And we'll also have some holiday carols that may mix in a little bit of Mozart there too. As a third program of our subscription season, we have a program called Comfort Food in February. Unfortunately, I will not be around to conduct that, but we have a brilliant guest conductor on the rise named Earl Lee, who will be stepping onto the podium, making his OMP debut. Earl has been associate conductor with the Pittsburgh Symphony and recently has been named assistant conductor of the Boston Symphony Orchestra. So I can't wait for you to hear uh, his program that will actually begin with uh, an arrangement, a wonderful arrangement of Mendelssohn's octet that normally is for double string quartet, but we have here uh, Yoon Jae Lee's brilliant orchestration, very colorful um, arrangement for full chamber orchestra. So not only will you have strings, but you also have winds and our timpanists uh, joining for that. Following that, we have Stephen Banks, a wonderful musical saxophonist, taking his turn on Mozart's oboe concerto, this time played on soprano saxophone. It's, he's a brilliant musician. I can't wait for you to hear his interpretation of the Mozart oboe concerto. And to close the program, we have Haydn's wonderful London Symphony, his number 104 in D major. Haydn's often, often called the father of the symphony. And this was written at, of course, the height of his creative powers as is his, his, his last symphonic work. I come back to the podium in April for a program called Play It Forward. And 
after two years of intermission, we finally get to work again with the Eugene Springfield Youth Orchestras in one of Mozart's brilliant symphonies with winds, timpani, and strings. In addition to that, we have our Young Soloist Competition making its anticipated return, and hopefully we will have our senior and junior division winners join us on stage. Finally, we have a sound investment project that will feature the world premiere by Los Angeles-based composer Juhi Bansal. Darren, would you like to take us, tell us a little bit about the sound investment program? Absolutely. This year, we are offering what is called the OMP Sound Investment Commissioning Program. And so this program is a unique way for our uh, audience who become investors into the Sound Commission uh, that will present in April um, to learn more about musical composition. And they'll be able to have the unique opportunity to participate in three uh, unique and uh, intimate salons with the composer. Um, these salons will be held at the Midtown Arts Center. The first one will be October 24th. And this will be the first opportunity where the investors get to meet with the composer, learn about the different techniques that the composer may be using in the work, different forms, um, basically beginning just to learn about how the composer is approaching the work. Um, and there'll be a short reception after each of the salons uh, where the investors will have the opportunity to mingle and speak with the composer. And the second salon will happen February 27th. Um, that one will feature a few musicians from the Oregon Mozart Players who will perform sections of the work um, so that the investors will begin to hear how the work is coming together. Um, and then the composer will talk a little bit more about how the piece is developed and um, uh, other ways in which uh, she's decided to use techniques or change the form or other various aspects of the compositional process. So it'll be a very interesting and engaging salon. The last salon will happen, uh, the first rehearsal, just before the first rehearsal of the, the performance week, uh, March 29th, uh, where the investors will have the opportunity to see the work in its full form in a draft score copy before the orchestra reads the piece for the very first time. So the composer will walk the investors through the work um, with the score copy in hand, and then the investors will have the opportunity for the very first time to hear the work performed by the orchestra. Um, so those are our three uh, sound investment salons. And then of course, um, the work will be performed on April 2nd. Um, and then at the end of the process, after the performance has happened and all the um, adjustments have been made in the score, uh, we'll have a, a copy of each uh, score printed for each investor. And um, the composer will sign that and the list of investors will be printed in the front and then each of the investors will receive a copy. So that's our OMP Sound Investment Program. Fantastic. And I can't wait for you to meet Juhi personally. She's a friend of mine who I've known for a little bit and she's super talented. That brings us to the final program of our subscription series and it's entitled appropriately, Magnificent Mozart. It's an all Mozart program and it spotlights this amazing musical double threat named Chelsea Guo. Not only is she a fierce pianist, competition winning pianist who and she'll be playing Mozart's Piano Concerto in D minor to showcase her work, but she's also an amazing vocalist. She's a double major in voice and piano at Juilliard, and she'll be opening the program with Mozart's famous Exultate Jubilate. In between, we have Mozart's little G minor symphony, number 25, which if you've watched the movie Amadeus, then you will certainly recognize it by ear and associate all those wonderful images from the film. Now, besides these five subscription concerts. We also have two very unique add-ons. Uh, in January, I get to play a program of chamber music for winds um, that's called Kelly and Friends because I get to invite some of my friends from OMP to join me. We'll have music by not only Mozart, but also Poulenc. We open with Poulenc's famous oboe and bassoon trio with piano, and we have Mozart's Kegelstadt trio, which has a clarinetist and vi violist, and as well as his famous piano and wind quintet to end the program. So can't wait for you to get back to my roots, so to speak. 
Uh, those of you who know me know that I was also a piano major at University of Oregon. So this is a great way for me to get keep me honest, so to speak, at the keyboard and make music with my musicians. In addition to that, we have The Planets, which is coming back from this past season because we didn't get a chance to do it. Uh, we're partnering with the Eugene Science Center, and we'll get to hear Holst's original two piano version of The Planets in the Science Center itself. You'll get a multi-sensory uh, experience because you'll be not only surrounded by the music, but also surrounded by the images of the universe flowing around you. And besides the musical uh, presentation, you'll also get to hear some words from University of Oregon astrophysics professor, James Schoenbert. He'll be giving you some insights into the planets as well as to the gods around which these particular movements of the planets were composed. Playing with me at the piano will be Andrew Brunell, an Oregon native, from, actually from Portland. We've known each other for a while and I can't wait for you to hear us get back and play some very, very famous music in, in a way that you've probably never heard before. Darren, would you like to speak a little bit about the COVID safety precautions that we have in place for this coming season? Yes, Kelly, um, and thank you so much for that overview. That, that's, that's sounding like an amazing season and I can't wait for this to get underway. With those changes, um, both with the venues, um, but we've also had um, some changes in what we'll require of our audience and, and of our musicians. And that is, uh, we'll be asking for uh, your COVID proof of vaccination. Uh, we're asking for a full vaccination status record to be provided at the entrance of each of the concert facilities before entering into the ticketing lines. And so that'll be uh, checked at the entrance. If you don't have proof of vaccination, you may also provide a proof of negative COVID test, a PCR test uh, that can be provided also um, at the beginning of the entrance uh, at each of the facilities. And, um, and then uh, you can head on into the ticketing line after you've uh, shown your proof of vaccination status or negative COVID test. And um, like Kelly mentioned, you know, these venues are, are far larger than our previous venues. So then there'll be room once everybody's seated, if you'd like to move around, um, we're gonna we're gonna make sure that um, folks feel comfortable um, in the venues, and there's there's plenty of space to do that. And we're not sacrificing any of the acoustical qualities, as Kelly mentioned. Um, these spaces uh, actually all have terrific uh, acoustical qualities and and far more flexibility, frankly. So we're looking forward to all of these um, new additions. To so besides the concerts of our anniversary season, we have a couple of new things that we'd like to talk to you about. First, we have some different performance locations. We've had, uh, of course, the Central Presbyterian Church from this past season as the home of our candlelight program. And we've enjoyed it so much that we're going back there again. The acoustics are beautiful, the ambiance is great, and they allow us to have live candlelight. So all of those are great things. And so we will be returning to that space. For the chamber music program, Kelly and Friends, will be actually be going to the Wildish Theater because that's a little bit more of an intimate space. They have a great piano there. And some of you may be familiar with other concerts that have happened in that space. So we're looking forward to returning there after um, some time since we've been there last. And finally, we have the First Baptist Church, which will be the home of most of our subscription concerts. It's actually a rather large space and it'll allow us to spread out as an audience, but without sacrificing anything acoustically because it's a wonderful acoustic space. It has additional benefits of, such as uh, great parking and there are some video screens on both sides of the stage that will allow us to project our videos and photographs from our world premiere happening in November. Besides locations, we have our digital concert hall. For those of you who were with us last season, know that we were able to uh, record our concerts on high definition video and audio and send those to you via stream at a later date after the performances. We'll be doing that again this coming season, but only on three concerts, the Candlelight concert, the Play It Forward from April and Magnificent Mozart in May. Darren, can you tell us a little bit about the pricing for the Digital Concert Hall? Sure, the pricing for the Digital Concert Hall this year is being featured by households. So it'll be $50 per household per concert. Um, and then the package of three concerts uh, for 150. Um, 
And we also uh, have the subscription series benefits um, where uh, all subscribers for the full subscription will receive a 50% discount on friends and family tickets, which is a, a discount that we've never been able to offer before but because of the space um, flexibility. We have some additional room to, to offer that wonderful discount to folks. And then we have our pick three um, as well subscription um, that we offer the 5% discount on. So 10% on the season subscription plus the 50% single tickets for family and friends and then 5% uh, discount on the pick three. Great, so there's a lot of options. If you can't join us in person for either, uh, for whatever reason, if you can't join us, there are digital concert halls possibilities for you. And if you can attend, you have some great discounts. You have no excuse not to invite your family and friends because tickets this cheap don't come around very often. <laughs>